Good afternoon, how are you? Well, you know, the there's a little bit of the bad comes with the good. It's now like 71 degrees here, comfortable. <laughs> and uh, now there's a light rain. It's an Irish mist, if you will. So uh, here in the DC area, and I haven't been involved in it, but uh, people are talking about it. We have a convoy of kooks, I would say. These people who think that we're compromising their freedom by wearing masks, distancing, and being vaxxed three times. So I thought, that's a pretty ridiculous thing. And I think they, they only want to disturb us and create chaos. In fact, their members say that. Interesting that there's a scientific study out today <laughs> that says that uh, COVID will shrink your brain. Now, what is the effect on a brain already shrunk <laughs> with COVID? Uh, I posted it on Twitter, so you can read it and study yourself. I think it's legit. Uh, closer to home, that is from the Beltway to um, Virginia, we have uh, a governor, Youngkins, and uh, he just can't help himself but do stupid, dumb things. And I'm not saying that being involved in politics helps people do this better, but uh, I don't, and I don't know that it would improve in his case. I think that he is uh, torrentially uh, terrible. That is, uh, he is a mass of water that goes in one direction and never hears anything else and is unthoughtful. And Okay, so what's a good example? He wants the words equity taken out of any public document. Now, how do I translate that? Equity. Equality. The Declaration of Independence. <laughs> what? So he's against equity. The other thing he wants to do, and a little more complicated, he wants to cut the taxes on groceries. Okay, well, you know, people have to eat, and that is something that would be popular. But in an area which is spread out over Virginia and which people have to commute and so forth, the funds from those taxes go to transit, mass transit. So if he's cutting the taxes there, where is he going to pay for the other, or does he think he can get away without it? The Conestoga wagon is not far behind for this man. Uh, now, Trump uh, gave a speech, I believe it was last night, over the weekend, and uh, <laughs> what he said is that we should uh, put uh, Russian symbols on our fighters and have them attack Moscow. You know, this, this guy is, well, he's falling in the sense that those who have ambition to be president themselves are kind of pushing him out of the way a little bit. So, But he thinks we should uh, modify these F-22s and send them uh, into Moscow. Uh, shame he isn't president now, huh? Now, as for what are we doing with uh, regard to, uh, well... The mess in Ukraine, well, there are a couple of things. We're sending fighter planes. The thing, of course, is can they fly them, Me meaning well enough so that they could be combative? Um, Israel, for example, when it got certain weapons from us, it stripped out a lot of the stuff. In other words, they could fly these things so well, they knew how to improve upon them when they, before they were going to use them. So that's, that's one thing about them. Uh, also, we have uh, challenges of war crimes. Now, it strikes me that this whole thing is a war crime, but let's put that aside for a second. The war crime that we're talking about is the war crime of shooting at civilians and blowing up their buildings and killing them. And we're, we're getting more and more reports of this with pictures and tape and interviews and so forth. So we believe it. But how do you define in a war that is itself unlawful, a crime more serious than the war that you're perpetrating in the first place? And I think the answer is uh, we can't expect uh, a person who is an imperialist and is reliving those glory days of the Soviet empire to stop and stop committing crimes. I mean, he's, he's creating crimes every day. We, that is the West and America, we're committing a crime and we're, we're seeing this happen in slow motion and we're not doing enough about it to stop it. The people in, uh, I guess it's Madova, which is to the Southwest 
and just up the coast from Odessa. And so they have a, a border with Ukraine and then they ha they're not far from the Black Sea. Uh, they're terribly anxious that they will be the next area that's taken over when Ukraine is taken over by uh, uh, Putin. The other thing about this is we're already talking about what are we going to do after Ukraine leaves? And we're kind of whispering it, but it's, you know, do we get the government out uh, so that they are the government in hibernation somewhere? I don't know, choose your place, Switzerland, Manhattan. And uh, that we count upon the insurgents to bring the Ukraine government back. I don't see how that happens without force, by the way. And I don't think an insurgency would succeed. But I think that the West feels so guilty about doing so little. And I mean this in terms of effectiveness. You know, yeah, we're spending a lot of money. Are we spending it smartly? Are we spending our resources smartly? Are we spending in such a way they can make a difference? And I think, no. And Ukraine and its citizens are rightly upset with us. So uh, there we are. And uh, it's raining a little bit more, but it's very pleasant. <laughs> Should have a t-shirt on instead. So have a good evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Keep your fingers crossed that things improve in some way that we can't contemplate under the current state of affairs to help Ukraine come out of this mess on top, where, whereas it does not look that way right now. All the best. Bye-bye.